say as the so-called cone of uncertainty now hovers over southern New England. Chief Meteorologist Tony Petraca has new information on Jose's projected path. He's live in the Pinpoint Doppler 12 Forecast Center. Tony. Well, Caroline, Mike, just in from the National Hurricane Center just for li literally a couple of minutes ago, the wind speed has come up a little bit now from uh, 75 to now 80 miles per hour. Keep in mind, there are no watches and warnings right now. Uh, I'm not anticipating any stormy weather now through the weekend and even into Monday. It's really the Tuesday, Wednesday time frame the potential, the possibility for some impact, whether it's direct or indirect, remains to be seen this far out. But let's take a look. Downtown Providence right now, looking at clear skies. A lot of humidity. I've noted um, some fog along the coastline, and we'll keep that in the forecast. We're going to get to the latest on Jose in just a second. I just want to cover some of this fog. Get some light winds and high humidity in Providence right now. Temperatures are in the upper 60s. It'll stay in that general temperature range. So as far as what we know and some of the uncertainties with Hurricane Jose, one thing's for sure, and really the entire East Coast, big ocean impacts, large swells offshore, big waves, extreme surf at the beaches, rip currents, perhaps even some beach erosion. It begins a little bit on Sunday, but more so Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. What's uncertain uh, this far out is really the uh, storm track, because the, the exact track will determine whether or not we have any issues on land as far as rain and wind and we'll show you that in more detail the timeline as mentioned before is, is in that Tuesday uh, Wednesday period of early next week satellite photo is um, showing some organization in the last uh, roughly 24 hours you see locally across New England things are quiet all the way back through the Midwest that's why our weekend weather looks quiet but uh, that is a uh, hurricane Jose Carolina coastline Florida that kind of a small compact storm system right now. Cat 1 storm winds, again, have just been bumped up to 80 miles per hour. Here's the latest from the National Hurricane Center. Still moving kind of slowly to the north and west at around 9 miles per hour. 600 miles south-southeast of Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, which is right in here. The forecast track uh, taking it uh, northwest, then eventually north. And as it approaches New England, well, this is Monday afternoon, Category 1 storm moving due north. There's southern New England and then eventually taking that bend to the right by Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. How soon this turn happens will determine whether or not we get any rain and wind from it. So that's how it kind of the wild card of this whole thing. But one thing's for sure, and that is big waves. A lot of our multiple computer guidance forecast tracks still indicate a north track and then eventually a northeast track, uh, pulling it away from our area by Wednesday morning. You can see on our wave height forecast model, big waves offshore, especially come later Monday, Tuesday into Wednesday. And that's going to be a, a big factor along the coastline, regardless of the storm track. This is going to be significant wave action and dangerous rip currents at area beaches. Two potential Potential scenario. Scenario number one, if it tracks closer, it gives us some rain and wind in that Tuesday, Wednesday time frame. Scenario number two is that it's far enough offshore so that we miss most of the rain and wind with the exception of the outer cape and the islands, but we still get uh, the big surf and the large waves offshore. Bottom line, stay tuned. Now through Monday, it is quiet and then all eyes on Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm keeping some rain and some wind in the forecast both of those days, the magnitude of which is yet to be determined. And so, again, stay attuned to uh, further updates next uh, several days. All right. Thank you, Tony. And